We've already heard this morning uh, from one FDA um, speaker about the importance to the FDA of what's called patient-focused drug development. Uh, at the FDA, primarily that phrase uh, refers to the meetings, the 20 meetings with uh, rare disease um, groups. Uh, in our lexicon, however, it's much broader. It's really how do you uh, engage the patient and listen to and hear the patient's voice and the patient advocate's voice from the uh, very beginning when we're helping instruct uh, the targets for the basic scientists. How, you know, we've met so many uh, basic scientists who thank us later for introducing them to a patient and realizing what's most important to the patient, therefore to instruct their, even their basic uh, research targets so they know they're working on something important. And all, then you engage uh, the patient's voice when you're the sponsor, when you're the drug company, uh, and not the classic engagement, which, in which they instill in common disorders, they too frequently engage the patient when it's time to recruit for a clinical trial. That's way too late. Way too much uh, time will be wasted later uh, because what we, what they really now realize, especially in rare disorders like ours, they need to do is engage the patient and the patient advocate and the clinicians that the patient advocate are, are helping support and the basic scientists they're helping support. So they sit down when they have a candidate uh, for clinical trial, they sit down with us at that point to mine the natural history database that so many of our foundations have assembled, to take a look at the patient registry and, and our capabilities uh, that will come in very handy to them later. But basically they sit down with us for a half day, a full day, and design their clinical trial. They're not waiting to come to us when they need patients for their trial. They're sitting down with us in time to actually design their clinical trial. So the protocol will be sounder, the uh, recruitment will be that much better because uh, they, the patients will know that this, design, this trial is designed around their needs, their requirements, their benefits, and their risks. Um, so when that engagement is done early and often like that, we, we've seen the, the evidence of the benefit because we're recruiting their clinical trials in hours, not months or years. We recruited the last phase three clinical trial in two hours and 43 minutes, 60 patients at three sites across the country. Uh, and that's, that's phenomenal, but it's because the patients know that these companies are coming to us and to them early on and this, this trial will be designed such that it that will address uh, their, their basic needs and their unmet medical needs. Um, secondly, for the, the companies, we, that process saves them a lot of time and money. They'll have far fewer uh, loss to follow patients leaving the trials. They'll have far fewer needs uh, for amending the protocol because that it's just not working well and it's coming up with um, measures that are too burdensome for the patient. They get too tired and don't perform well. So for all those reasons, they know that this process of early engagement, frequent engagement, engage the patient, hear the patient's voice early and often, um, is saving them time and money. They'll get, they'll have a more successful clinical trial. It will get to um, culmination uh, quicker and more effectively. And it, they design their clinical outcome measures based on our natural history database. Um, so it, it's, it's really, and, and we'll also continue to work, we'll make it far less, we'll remove a lot of the uncertainties in the regulatory process because we work every day with the FDA and the NIH. And so uh, these are people that are, our, you know, our colleagues, our partners in, in all this. And so the, the companies now take patients or patient advocates, take us and our best clinicians, or our best patient scientists, to their pre-IND meetings, their milestone meetings with the FDA. And so they know that um, when they show up at the FDA, the FDA knows us, they know our disease, we've helped educate them, so there's far less uncertainty in those meetings, and it's a far more collegial environment rather than an adversarial uh, challenge for them. And then all the way into uh, when it comes time, and we haven't gotten there yet, but we're eager to get there, when you have an advisory committee meeting 
to do the final assessment uh, by the FDA and the advisory committee, committee of the clinical data and to you know, consider a new drug application for approval, uh, they know that we'll be there for that too, and that we will have a patient representative probably serving on the advisory committee that's already been vetted by the FDA. We'll have uh, a, a lot of activity in assembling for the one hour of uh, public testimony, we'll have assembled the, the right patients and patient families to do a good job there. Um, and when hopefully they get that approval, they know we'll be, be there in the marketplace helping educate the, the patients and the physicians and um, making that connection between the, the therapy and the patient. So for all those reasons, from start to finish, uh, it's so vitally important to all the stakeholders, the companies, the scientists, the clinicians, uh, the patients, and the patient advocates, um, that, that engagement come early and often and throughout the R&D continuum.